Hello everybody, welcome back. It is me, your old pal Orpheus, with another edition of the Madness and Mayhem podcast. That's right, it's a chance for you to get on those uh, headphones and sit back, relax, and listen to the smooth sounds of your old pal Orpheus as I slip into that radio DJ voice from the early 2000s. (laughs) Anyway, hi there, I hope you're doing well wherever you are today, whether it is day or night. Doesn't matter to me as long as you're stopping by and enjoying some of my content. So today I wanted to talk about something Something that, uh, boy, it's a it's an issue that is getting worse and worse, and uh, with some of the new technology, it's going to even get worse than that. And uh, it is something that, boy, okay. So let me just cut to the chase. I'm a former journalist, a former radio personality, and uh, a former you know uh, news director, news anchor, news reporter for several radio stations across the country a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> seems like a lifetime ago, but anyway. And uh, when I was going through school for journalism, we were taught a lot of different things. And I think we've strayed from the path in terms of our society and news and journalism and media in in general. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Okay. So when it comes to journalism, I have to kind of go back and tell you a little bit about myself in terms of uh, the the background that I have, okay? When I was really, really young, like old enough to operate uh, a little uh, cassette player kind of radio thing, uh, I used to do my own little radio shows. And I would sit there and I would interview my friends and I would uh, play little clips of music and come back just like I'd heard on the radio. You know, uh, radio was in its golden age back then. Still sort of is... (laughs) You know, it, they've dropped a lot of it since since a lot of it became automated. Uh, the flavor has been lost, but I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, I used to interview my friends. I used to like, you know, have little shows where I'd talk about like the weather and stuff like that. And, you know, what you'd think was going on with a, a kid trying to emulate a radio personality. And so I always had this dream of being on the radio. And the coolest thing about it for me is... You get this sense of being invited into someone's home, right? You're this this phantom voice that comes floating across the ether on radio waves and someone has to sit there on a dial and tune you in or hit a button to tune you in specifically and they sit back and they're listening to you and you get to just kind of drift around in the airwaves in their home. I know this sounds really deep, man. Like, whoa, that's really cool. No, but like, you know, that's one of the things that I always liked about radio is there's this... There's this closeness and this warmth to it, but at the same time, a lot of people just have radio on in the background, right? It's this kind of background noise. And I know some of you out there put my stuff on in the background while you're cleaning or cooking or, you know, doing whatever in the house. I am totally cool with that. (laughs) Like, absolutely. If you're one of those people, hats off to you. You're doing a lot of good uh, for yourself by just giving yourself a chuckle and getting whatever project done that you have to. <laughs> so anyway, um, I always had this this uh, fascination with that being invited into someone's life idea. The other one that always got me was the idea that radio waves are going to travel out into space forever. Now they do dissipate, okay, but there is a faint signal that goes on out into space for forever, and with my voice being traveling out there and. It's been the speed of radio is the speed of light, I think. So it's been 20 light years some for some of the broadcasts that I've done or more. <laughs> so it's that far away from the, uh, the, the, uh, the earth. So it's this kind of cool idea that that kind of what I do, what I did was eternal, right? Something that uh, will go on and, and live on. And that's kind of the cooler thing of radio, you know, being able to know that you, you're you going on forever almost, you know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's this cool uh, thing. I don't know. I keep saying cool, but it's like, for me, it is this amazing uh, bit of technology that comes across that allows me to, to live on, right? Beyond my years and on into space. Again, we're getting really deep, man. I know. Oh, right. So anyway, <laughs> um, so let me let me talk a little bit more about like when I went to uh, to school, like uh, college. I took English and creative writing and uh, communication skills, and then I, I went on to go to a broadcast college and uh, graduated from there with a degree in radio and uh, radio engineering. So broadcast journalism, things like that, were the classes that I took. Now. 
We need to talk about what's happened to news in the last, I'd say, 10, 15 years, but it's gotten ex exponentially worse in the last five years, and especially since COVID hit everybody. And that is that news has become absolute garbage, right? When I was in school, we were taught things like journalistic ethics, um, being able to uh, tell the difference between right and wrong, right? The, the basic stuff of not taking a side on a story unless you specifically tell them that you are what's known as a pundit or someone that is a, a speaker for a certain cause or side of something. You're being partisan, right? You're, you're taking a side on something. And when you do that as a news personality and you're not on something like, you know Hannity or you know someone that's that's very or like uh, Rush Limbaugh you know what I'm saying like someone that is very very upfront about their uh, the side that they're taking it can be really very difficult for you to suss out what the truth is with a lot of stories and so back then we were taught like to be very clear to be accurate brief and concise the abcs of writing accurate brief and concise you want to not take a side on something right and one of the other things that we were taught is to not use something called inflammatory language inflammatory language is words that would you know they make you kind of pop your head up and wonder so when you when you uh, read a news headline it's you know the prince of wales goes goes on a trip and uh, decides to visit some refugees uh, and you know so the the headline is something like Prince of Prince of Wales or Prince of wherever um, visits refugees at homeless camp okay instead inflammatory language would be like <laughs> like a Prince of Wales um, visits war torn uh, scarred landscape but you know like it's it's this inflammatory language. It inflates itself and it makes it a lot worse. It's also words like, okay, hey, trigger warning for anyone that's got a sensitivity to words. Uh, words like rape, abortion, um, abuse, um, bomb. These are all things that if you put them in headlines or if you put them into the story itself, it causes a lot of trouble because it makes people, you know, it's this false like, oh, what's what's going on, right? And this may seem silly because these days the idea of clickbait is <laughs> who everything here on YouTube is pretty much clickbait. Uh, at least the big things are. And in news, it's starting to bleed over into news. And that's the problem with the media today. They are more concerned with getting your eyes and your clicks than they are with being accurate, brief and concise. And so what happens is you, if you have a news app or you, you follow X or you have friends on Facebook or, you know, TikTok or whatever that link that link news stories, they're often, you know, you'll notice that the titles of them are just absolutely inflammatory language or they're just absolute bullshit, which, you know, <laughs> some of my favorite ones, because I follow a lot of space things. And so I get suggested a lot of space stories and some of them are like, you know, a huge asteroid barreling towards Earth, you know, find out more about whether it'll strike the planet. And you just go like, what the hell? And you, you go, well, I have to click on that, right? <laughs> and then you find out that it's like, you know, this thing that's the size of maybe a, a Volkswagen that's, you know, going the speed of something that would be going through space. And it's not even going to come close to us. It's not even going to get close to the moon. It's just, you know, it's heading in an earthward sort of direction, kind of like if you were driving by Las Vegas and not going to Las Vegas. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like taking the bypass around Las Vegas instead of going to downtown. That's kind of how the asteroid is. But they don't tell you that in the headline. They just want you to click it because folks news has gone so far downhill that newspapers are kind of struggling newspapers in a physical media form are pretty much dead if you are someone that goes out and buys a newspaper once in a while good for you you're supporting your local news um, but you're not going to make a lot of headway in terms of what news is evolving into unfortunately news is evolving into absolute garbage because when you reduce it to a website okay when your when your news is reduced to something that is online a digital media form well you have to treat it like any other digital media that you're trying to make money off of so here on youtube a lot of what you get uh 
a lot of what you get monetized with and you know part of what they pay you for is views okay so that's why you see a lot of clickbait everyone's like oh the craziest thing all those stupid trends that used to be like the 3 a.m call and stuff like that oh i'm calling i'm calling satan at 3 a.m Ooh, who's who's this this is satan blah like okay <laughs> stuff like that clickbait it's because they want you to come and click on their site site traffic equals media i mean site traffic means uh more income it means uh, that there's a steady stream of people coming to the site people that are going to see the ads that are on the site and so therefore there's a higher chance of those ads resulting in someone buying something or at least clicking to an affiliate link which is uh, another way to say that they went and passed through the site to go and do something else that the site will get paid for right so if you go to wallstreetjournal.com for some reason they are absolute the top tier garbage these days um, if you go to wallstreetjournal.com you are uh, contributing to their their revenue stream okay because the people that pay them for the views the clicks on their site see your your visit to the site and go yeah that's another reason for us to pay for the advertising okay well what that does is it creates this situation where instead of accuracy, brevity, and concise, uh, you know, conciseness? How do you say that? That's not, you can't really say that word. Uh, to be to be concise as well, um, you kind of lose focus because that doesn't bring people in, right? If you are accurate, brief, and concise, you know, we've all encountered this where the headline of the story goes dot, 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 right before the good part, right? If that's the case, that news uh, outlet is doing it wrong. OK, they're doing it completely wrong because you should have the ability to read a headline of a news story and go, huh, I wonder if I should go read more about that. But it should give you just the, the talking point that you should be able to go out and talk about, or, you know, at the water cooler or whatever at work, right, with friends at, at school or whatever you're going to do when you talk to your buddies. Right. So instead of that, these days, the, the headline will go, you know, Prince of Wales visits and you go, well, visited what? I have to go click on this, right? But instead, you have to waste your time to go read that instead of just having that talking point and becoming a little bit more informed. One of the things that pissed me off the, the most here in our local town is we used to have, uh, they did online, but it was free, right? You could just go and read the news stories about what's going on in your local area. Well, for me, I'm in a smaller town. Re well, smaller relatively. I'm, I'm in a, a smaller town that's a little bit out of the way. And so what happens is uh, you you kind of you don't get the, the big news coverage of the big, you know, Fox, ABC, NBC. There really is not a local television station either. So we rely on the, the local newspaper and they're good for, you know, things that I want to complain about something through an editorial or I want to sell my car on the on the classifieds or, you know, read the comics on Sunday. But the problem is. When they went to the online thing and they started, they, they had it available for everyone. Like I said, it was free. You could go onto their website or see it on Facebook or whatever. And there you go. You had your your source of news for what's going on in town. Well, just a few years ago, they switched their model to become monetized. And so that's all behind a paywall. You have to pay them a monthly or annual fee in order to get access to the newspaper. And you say, well, what's the harm in that? They're making some money. Well, the thing is, they're making the community dumber. Okay, they're making it so the community does not have that connection news wise with what's going on with other people in the community. They're not able to read those editorials. They're not able to see the the obituaries anymore. They're not able to see the classifieds unless they go buy a physical copy of it, which these days, let's be honest, folks, we're making enough trash as it is. We don't need extra paper trash. And, you know, the funny part about I, I went and bought one of our local newspapers a few weeks ago. And not only is there just like so much less information in there, the, the newspaper itself is physically smaller. Now, I don't know if you go get a newspaper now and compare it to, I don't know, a, a, maybe other national newspapers aren't doing this, but our local newspaper is like 
an inch smaller on the margins, on each margin. So it's like the newspaper itself looks like, look like a little 70% size newspaper to me. <laughs> but anyway, so that's part of what's going on with that. News has become this kind of, you know, we want traffic to our websites. We want you to click on things. And now that the news has turned, okay, I have to go into this and, and I'm going to get some heat for this, but I have to. I absolutely have to. Um, so everyone is praising social media sites uh, for being able to have anyone become a citizen journalist, right? And and go out there and report live on, this, on the scene for something and do your, your X tweets or whatever they're calling them, your, your X's, your your posts whatever they're calling it on x now you're doing your posts you're you're live in a protest that's going on downtown or something like that and everyone's saying oh this is this is the savior of journalism it's truth it's right there and you can see it you can experience it with the people that are experiencing it <laughs> okay uh, so if you don't, don't trust the uh, the journalism and, and the news media, the people that are paid to do this stuff, um, why are you trusting some stranger who's uh, at a protest? For, for, in the first place, they're at a protest for a reason, folks. They're either there because they're protesting something or they're supporting something. And so you got how much more polarizing can you get besides getting the live information from someone who's live at the protest, okay? Now, with journalism itself, let me let me put it this way. Um, I know you don't trust media anymore, and it's really sad that people don't trust the news anymore. But when I was doing it, the same idea was kind of floating around. We're like, well, you guys are all government controlled anyway, so there's an agenda. Uh, as a news person for a long time, uh, let me tell you that when we go in there in the morning there is no fax uh there is no email there is no um a secret letter from the government every morning telling us what news we're going to cover okay <laughs> there are things called embargoes and there's kind of where that mistrust comes in an embargo is a hold on a story uh, or a press release that uh is for a specific period of time now it's not like you are, are going to go to jail for it unless it's something well, that's, you know, ridiculous. I Okay, so over all of my time doing broadcasting, I maybe ran into about a dozen things that were embargoed, and it was stuff like uh, the Best Buy in the large city near us is going to be opening, right? And they don't want people to know yet until a certain date. Blah, 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 blah. So it's the, normally it's that sort of thing. But people hear that embargo word and they go, ooh, right? Maybe hearing about the talking points for the uh, the president's State of the Union address or something. And we'll get them that morning before it takes place. And they say, well, this is embargoed until later on tonight. Makes sense, right? Well, believe me, there's no directives that get printed out for us in the morning that tell us what to talk about and what not to talk about, okay? But the thing with citizen journalism, getting back to that, the biggest problem that I have with citizen journalism is you have it being done by people that are not trained as journalists. They're not trained in writing. They're not trained in the ethics of journalism. They are not trained in English. For God's sake, they're not trained in English. And boy, is that an issue a lot of the times. Uh, they don't know how to tell the narrative, how to produce the story, produce the information so that someone can go on and form their own opinion from that stuff. It's always, look, here, I got this video of these cops beating up these people. Okay, well, why were they beating up those people? Were they defending themselves? Were they responding to a, an escalated threat? Were they being, you know, a truly scumbag police? Well, you don't know because you just get one side of it, that one person's video, or maybe a bunch of people who are just filming that portion of it and so therefore the court of public opinion goes on and roasts those cops or those protesters or the anyone at you know at any event that's being citizen journalist you know <laughs> covered uh, it gets to a point where you don't know who to trust anymore and I think that's bad so my advice my advice to you is to go out there absorb as much information as you can from as many sources as you can Hell, go out there and do a Google search on something, any topic that you're interested in that's in the news, 
read every single article that you can from as many different viewpoints as you can. And hopefully by throwing enough, you know, um, opinion darts at the wall, you'll start to get a picture, a grouping of, of what the truth is. Because if you don't, you're going to be sucked into that clickbait. You're going to be sucked into that hole of, of not understanding what's real and what's fake anymore. And that's kind of the agenda of some people out there. They want you to be confused because when you're confused, you're easier to control. That is the secret behind some of this media that is cross-checked with bullshit, okay? So keep in mind, keep your head on a swivel. You're always going to have to know and be skeptical of what's out there, especially as we go forward with, forward with things like AI. AI news writing is absolute trash. You should be able to spot it by now. Uh, if you can't, go and take a look at, uh, you know, try to find some, some ways to identify it. It's pretty simple. There are articles out there on how to identify uh, audio, um, artificial intelligence. Wow. <laughs> Brain day. Artificial intelligence news and art and things like that. It's here on YouTube too. So watch out for it here. And that's my advice for you today. So that's my thoughts on how journalism has kind of turned into this, this total mess. I don't know. Maybe I'll have to take up the mantle again and stand on the hill with the sun behind me as a, as a journalist and come back and spread the truth again. Ha -ha. If that's what you want to hear, go ahead and leave it in the comments. Anyway, we'll talk to you in the next one here on the Madness and Mayhem podcast. I've been your host, Orpheus, and I hope that you are well. I hope you continue to do well. And you know what? Treat yourself well because you absolutely deserve it. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.